is on. Let me check that it is actually live streaming. We are live and we are recording. I'll excuse myself. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. I appreciate it. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Fredonia Central School District Board of Education meeting for Tuesday, June 21st, 2020. We start every meeting with a pledge to the flag. So if everyone would please rise and, and recite the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for what it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, will the liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> uh, thank you, everyone. <clears throat> so we have uh, quite a few people uh, on this uh, Zoom meeting tonight, board meeting. Uh, there's at least three pages. Uh, so what does that make it? Uh, close to 40 people, 35 40 people is my guess. And because, um, because I'm going to have to look and, and Ms. Legal is going to have to count votes from board members, I'm just asking that all board members uh, keep their hands raised when they vote for uh, at least uh, five seconds, if we could probably keep it until uh, Ms. Slagle says, okay. Um, that would help us out a lot. So I, I would appreciate board members doing that. Um, I don't know if, uh, <clears throat> if everyone's screen is similar to mine, but uh, there's a microphone next to your picture. And if there's a red line through it, that means we can't hear anything that you're saying. So I, I know we had uh, issues with this before trying to trying to get that uh, the microphone turned on. Uh, but uh, if if you want to talk and that red line is through the microphone, we won't be able to hear you. Okay. So uh, we have a proposed agenda for tonight's meeting, and I would uh, appreciate a. Uh, a motion to bring that to the floor so that we can discuss it and then vote on that. So if I could get uh, uh, a motion to bring that to the floor, please. And I can't see, I can see one board member on my screen. So you're gonna, we're gonna have to help. Oh, Mr. Jambrone, <laughs> are you bringing this to the floor? Oh, yes, that's sir. wonderful. That's wonderful. If we could get a second on that. Mr. Hawk is the second. <laughs> Mr. Hawk. <laughs> Thank you. Now, I'm going to make, um, make one adjustment in this agenda. And if you look at the last page, uh, we've got, <clears throat> excuse me, item number 11 should actually be moved uh, to item, the item after item eight. So the, uh, the announcements and board correspondence should occur after the president's report and prior to entering into executive session. Because by the time we come out of executive session, everybody else is gonna be gone. Uh, so, we won't be able to announce that to too many people. So I'm going to ask that we uh, make that one adjustment to the agenda. Is there anything, uh, any board member like to pull anything uh, out of the consent agenda so that we can, we can pull that into the regular uh, agenda?
If not, I'm going to ask uh, board members uh, for their approval by raising their hand, please. I have all approved. All approved. Thank you very much, Ms. Slagle. <clears throat> Which moves us uh, right into uh, administrators' reports, and uh, we have quite a few young young people on this Zoom meeting tonight. Um, and uh, the elementary learn and serve, uh, Mr. Drawlingser and Ms. Hartung and uh, Ms. Magsey, uh, the Learn and Serve Advisors and Students. And we have a presentation uh, that they will be giving. Take it away. All right. Well, thank you so much this evening for allowing us to come in and speak on behalf of our Fredonia Elementary Learn and Serve. Um, Mrs. McAfee and I would like to welcome our following students that are with us. We have Cecilia Tonelli, Erin Hartung, Delaney Arttrip, Adeline Stelrecht, Meredith Marshall, and Ben Brodigam, and they're with us this evening. Um, Mrs. McAfee, is there anything you'd like to say? I can't see you on my screen right now, but before we begin. Is her microphone muted? Hey. Yeah, I see. <clears throat> Well, we could, we could go ahead and, and begin the presentation because I don't see her on anymore. She may have popped off for a second. Um, so if you could please, Ms. Slagle, turn to the next slide. So this year, um, we have 38 third and fourth grade students and we began in September. Um, uh, we always hold um, an application process where students have to apply to become part of our Learn and Serve community. Um, and we did many, many activities, at least one per month this year, um, up until basically April when uh, we had, you know, the unfortunate uh, 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 COVID that happened to us. But um, we're very excited about what we're going to be doing in the fall. So the first activity we did was on Friday, September 27th. We had, um, this was a um, opportunity to work alongside our middle school and high school friends um, because we were uh, talking and teaching the students about the, um, what had happened at Sandy Hook um, Elementary. And our students um, wore green throughout the school district mm -hmm. in order to support the students, faculty and staff and families involved in that. We then moved into the Feed Fredonia Challenge. Uh, we did this in the month of October. Um, the big thing was is that we worked alongside um, Wheelock with this. So we had many um, students donate food, as you can see, from our elementary school and Wheelock, as well as parents and family members that stopped by the office to drop it off. Um, so we put that all together and the kids were involved by decorating posters and um, also decorating the boxes that they put all the food in. Uh, we did the Pink the School, which we actually did um, across the entire school district. Um, we also worked alongside the uh, Fredonia Middle School Learning Service Learning Club. Um, and they also sold cookies in addition to dressing up like we did. And we raised a total of over $1,000 for um, the Susan G. Komen uh, Cancer Awareness uh, Organization. You wanna say something about Mr. Sertizio's, no. <laughs> 
so we got wind that it was Mr. Sertizio's 50th birthday this past year. And um, one of our activities was putting together uh, different types of um, cards and posters and the students we worked on putting that together. I hope he has them stored somewhere in his office and they're not busting out of a closet, but I'm sure um, that was something that the kids had a great time doing. I have every one of those cards. Thank you very much. Really, really <laughs> made my day. Oh, God. <clears throat> Next slide, please. So this was something that um, Mrs. McAfee um, wanted to start this year, which I thought was an excellent idea. Um, we were doing two things at one time. Michelle, do you want to talk a little bit more about this? I'm I'm having such trouble with my internet right oh, now. No. I'm trying to get it on my phone. I'm trying to join on my phone right now, but my computer is not working one bit. Oh dear. So I apologize, April. Oh, that's okay. Um, okay, so anyways, we did the kindness rocks. The kids decorated different rocks. Um, and as you can see, we put them um, around town and also around the main campus so that um, high school students and middle school students and elementary school students could find the rocks. They were just inspirational messages, a lot of different things that the kids wanted to get in, um, to say, um, to try to motivate each other, and um, also remind people that being kind is the only way to be. In also the month of um, November, we coordinated an event with the Blue Star Mothers of Western New York. And this time we also cooperated with SUNY Fredonia. So we made cards for local veterans as well as collected food items for members of our military and their families in Western New York. We do partner with the Blue Star Mothers yearly. And um, we try to do one around Veterans Day and also Memorial Day. Um, unfortunately, this day we weren't able to do them. Memorial Day one, but um, we did raise a lot of, um, we did collect a lot of donations for our military families at that time in November. So our high school interact club reached out to see if we would make some giving thanks cards for our teachers, faculty and staff this year. Um, so we had a list of all the faculty and staff that were in the elementary school and we um, set out to making tons and tons of different cards to thank the teachers and faculty and staff for all that they do. Um, and also the uh, high school interact club did some in some um, work with us with that and they because they also had like um, gifts of candy and, and little treats for the teachers. So the kids had a really great time picking up the different teachers that they wanted to write to um, finding different inspirational messages and um, encouraging each other as well as um, encouraging the staff to do that. So our holiday festivist day, um, we put that together. We this is our second year, I think, doing that, um, where we decor. Uh, the kids were able to dress up and wear their favorite holiday gear. We also decorated wreaths for random acts of kindness. So as you can see in these pictures here, you'll see a lot of the students were putting together. Um, tissue paper and construction paper and putting together little wreaths that they would hang on different teachers doors throughout the district. We also have a holiday party <laughs> and we had quite quite the donations from all the family and friends. Um, the kids really had a nice time getting together. This is where we just kind of let them chit chat. As you can see, we have a lot of dancers in our group. You can probably see the slick back hair. They had a rehearsal that evening. So, um, you know, they were up bright and early and then made it to rehearsal that evening. That's the one nice thing about our kids is that they're really involved in everything and they're really well-rounded kids and um, we've just really had a great time with them. Um, so this was one way to celebrate. We usually try to do another one at the end of the year, and unfortunately we didn't get a chance to do that this year, but we had a fun holiday party. So this was a new um, activity that we did in January. Um, one of our teachers, Ms. Wells, has a um, niece 
uh, who's a senior in Ohio, and she survived a brain tumor. And while she was in the hospital, um, the they had seen that, you know, she was in the hospital and it was a dreary wintry day. And um, she thought, you know, what are some ways that I can help cheer myself up and cheer other people up around the hospital, especially the children that were younger than her. So um, she started making snowflakes out of paper. So this was like a new movement that she had started. And so the students, as you can see, um, started getting different types of uh, construction paper, all different shapes and sizes. We looked online how to make different snowflakes. Um, we even had, as you could see in the background, the TV was um, showing us how to do different types of cutouts to make them more intricate, or sometimes we had just easy ones. Um, so we had a lot of fun doing this, and we had, I think, about four boxfuls of folded snowflakes by the end so that we could send it with Mrs. Wells to go to see her niece, and her niece was able to bring it to the hospital, the children's hospital in Ohio for um, you know, for the kids to kind of celebrate and, and enjoy. Um, the only thing was next year we might need to put down tarps because it was a, a <laughs> confetti mess in my room after we got done. <laughs> <laughs> Which is interesting to try to clean up right before you have to teach, but <laughs> they do an amazing job, right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, did you want to talk a little about pen pennies for patients? Uh, sure, Michelle, go ahead. So sure. So we've been raising <clears throat> money for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, um, and and this year we were able to raise seven hundred seventy dollars um, to give to them. And some went to Mikey's Way um, just to help out with cancer. So it's been awesome to have kids in first grade come with their piggy banks full and donate um, and, and, and be really excited about doing that. So it's been awesome. In February, um, we were asked to make um, different types of Valentine's Day cards for the local retirement homes and community. So the kids, um, some of them were working on our kindness posters, and then there were also some working on Valentine's cards, and then they would flip-flop. So the nice thing is, is because we're so involved, the kids get a choice usually to do two or three different things while we're um, working in our morning um, meetings because you know some kids might start out on one thing and then they get motivated by another student to do another thing so um, it's nice that they're able to kind of vary their opportunities each time they come in and um, this year we dropped off the cards that were made not only just in our learn and serve but also in some of the classrooms um, around our elementary school, they had little cards made for our retirement friends. And um, I know that we received thank you cards from Fredonia Place and the WCA Home saying how much their residents enjoyed um, getting Valentine's cards from kids and how, how they all thought it was so cute with all these little hearts and all these little handmade um, things that the kids did, so. Michelle, do you wanna talk about this sure. one? Sure. So we and I know we have Liz here too. So yeah, we work. <laughs> we work together with the high school impact club, and we made posters to put up all around the um, campus. And the kids just love working with the older students, and I think the older students as well loved working with our younger students, and just bringing positive messages around the school. Everywhere you looked, there was something um, encouraging for anyone to look at and enjoy. Um, we love doing that together and we hope to do that more in the future. Yeah. Great messages. Yeah, and that's one thing we're trying to do more of is just making sure that we're doing it cross um, campus because we see how important it is for the kids to see the older kids doing it, but also it motivates the older kids um, to see the younger kids and say, wow, you know, someone that young can do that. So. Um, I think, you know, continuing to, to reach out to the middle school and the high school and allowing our groups to interact really has made a big impact on all the kids in general, so. Um, and then the last, actually almost the last thing we did was um, we had um, a Rock Your Socks World Down Syndrome Day where everybody wore mismatched socks on the 13th of um, March. 
Uh, this was because um, Jenny Smith, or one of our pre-K teachers, has a student at Wheelock with Down syndrome, and so um, she wanted to raise awareness for Gigi's Playhouse, which is in Buffalo, and um, what they are is a, um, it's an organization that has just basically started up, and I'm hoping that it'll still continue, um, you know, once this is all done and, and we're back to, you know, uh, stage four, hopefully, um, where the kids can get together and it's an adaptive type of um, gym That's where, right. yeah, where the kids can go and, and do many different things, but it's not, you know, so everybody has the opportunity to play and, um, and be together. So, um, so that was nice that we were able to do that. Mm -hmm. So we we had started working for our together on putting together a Lakeshore Humane Society thing, but unfortunately this was canceled. This was something we were going to do March 27th. Um, this is something we do annually to raise money and also awareness for um you know for the animals that are in shelters. So um, this was something we we're hoping to do, but unfortunately kind of didn't happen. But next year. Yep. <laughs> And then, do you want to speak to this one, Michelle? So we usually partner with the police and do the community cleanup day, and they had to postpone it. But instead of doing it all together, we were asked to just go out and clean up a, a part of the community. So it wasn't quite as fun as some of the experiences we had in the past when we worked together, but some of the kids did send us photos out there cleaning up in our community. And we look forward to doing that again next year yeah. with that Fredonia Police Department. So these are some things that we weren't able to do um, because of COVID-19. We weren't able to do our Lakeshore Humane Society um, we usually have an annual teacher appreciation pancake breakfast in May, which this year we had hoped to open up to um, the teachers district wide, um, but unfortunately that didn't work out. And that's where the students um, during teacher appreciation week, they um, come and, and they serve their teachers. They, you know, put together um, decorations for the tables. Um, and, uh, you know, last year we had some students that wrote songs for their teachers and things like that. Um, and then you guys can read pretty much what else we could have done. Um, but this was probably one of the busiest years uh, that we've had where we've had like two or three events per month. Um, and I, I expect it's probably only going to get busier just because the kids always come up with something or someone always comes up with something that we can get involved in. So that's always a very positive thing to get to, to have. And that's our future. So <laughs> while we, um, we thank the Board um, of Education and our district administrators for allowing us to continue with this, um, I think the kids really uh, love it. Is, are there any of our kiddos that want to say anything? Meredith, Marshall, <laughs> you're my first one up. Meredith, do you want to say anything? It was a great time I had fun. It was a great time and I had fun, a lot of fun. <laughs> Meredith's one of our third graders. She'll be a fourth grader next year. How about yeah. Ms. Delaney? I see you next. Ms. Delaney, would you like to comment on Learn and Serve and what you did and how you did it? I'm going to miss Learn and Serve, and I had a lot of fun in it. And she'll probably get involved in the middle school, I'm sure. That's one nice thing. A lot of our kids go and roll right into the middle school program with Mrs. Forbes and Mrs. Heminger. So... That's that's a good thing. Um, let's see. I have Addie Stelrecht. Addie Stelrecht, do you want to say anything? Um, I had a lot of fun, and I can't wait to do it next year. Awesome. Good. Let's see. Is Ben still there? I see Ben. Whoop, unmute yourself, Ben. There I he had is. a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> and Miss Cece. I had a lot of fun and I'm going to miss learning and serve. We're going to miss you guys too. 
But the great thing is, is like I said, we cooperate. Michelle and I reach yeah. out to Liz and to Lisa and say, hey, what can we do to get involved with each other? And mm -hmm. how can we get these kids moving and motivated? So, um, so we'll be able to see those older kids and then keep them, keep them moving on up. Yeah. So, is there anything else you have to say, Michelle? I just think it's been one of the most positive experiences of my career, just being a part of Learn and Serve. Wednesday mornings are like the highlight of my week. The kids come in with such energy and motivation and they're so excited to work together and put posters up in the school and create. It's just been extremely positive. I would agree. So thank you for allowing us to do this. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mrs. Hartung. Um, any questions from the board? Um, I, I am going to ask one thing, and that's um, when you see students come in and then you see them after a year of this, can, can you kind of go through what, what you see as some of the changes in attitude and, and uh, how, how it affects the students? Michelle, do you want to go ahead first? Or it doesn't matter. I would no. I would say <clears throat> that they, they just want to do for others. So um, it just changes their attitude. It's not just thinking about themselves, but what they can do to help out in our school, and then hopefully that leads out into the community. And just I always tell the kids that they're the role models. Um, you know, they set the standard for other students in our building just to have those characteristics, um, like in our pride, the respect, um, all of the things, getting involved, being enthusiastic. And it does carry on into the classroom and into other aspects of life, just doing for others. I, I would say it's a big change in our students. And, and they have the power, they have the power to, to do, do for their communities. Right. And, and I think the other thing to piggyback on what Michelle also, you know, to say is that we're, you know, we get applications from all different students. And so these students are not necessarily placed in the same classroom. They're not all best friends. Um, you know, obviously there's some groupings that do come in as good friends to begin with, but we see this um, community built within each other. Um, so one day you might see some of the fourth graders um, you know, at the beginning, we saw the fourth graders working kind of by themselves and doing their own thing. But then um, as like a month went by, all of a sudden we saw intermingling of groups. We saw kids that don't necessarily see each other in the classroom um, working with others um, that are outside their classroom. Um, you know, I've heard kids say, well, yeah, so and so came up to me on the playground the other day and we were able to play because you know, we were in learn and serve together. So they draw in those connectivities. And I think then then that reaches out to other students. And there, you know, have always been kids that come up and say, can I join learn and serve now? Or is that something that I have to do at the beginning of the year? And I always say, well, yeah, it's something we do at the beginning of the year. But next year, you know, you can try it next year. And we have mm -hmm. first graders and second mm -hmm. graders that are saying, I can't wait to be in learn and serve when I'm in third mm -hmm. grade. Or, or um, I hope I can do it for two years. You know, a bunch of the kids said, can I can I do it next year, even though I was in it as a third grader? So there's the motivation to want to continue and yeah. do that. Our students also speak on the morning announcements. So mm -hmm. whenever we're um, participating in an activity, um, they can't wait. Can I speak? Can I put together something? So they, they work together, they write, they collaborate. Then they have to speak um, on the announcements in front of their peers. So build self-confidence. Mm -hmm. um, they love to do it. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Anything else from the board? Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, all the students who came on. Uh, I appreciate everyone. Yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's going to move us uh, next on the agenda. Uh, we have some retirement uh, recognitions uh, presented by Mrs. Ms. Troutman, uh, middle school principal, and Mr. Drowling, sir. Oh, and Ms. Uh, Greenow. 
So all of the elementary students, uh, you don't need to stick around for the rest of the board meeting because it might get boring for you. And I totally understand that. Okay. So if you want to, if you want to get off the zoom, that's, that's fine. Okay. Thank you. So Ms. Troutman. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for letting me uh, speak about our two retirees. Um, the first one I'm going to talk about is Kathy Cassini Steger. I really want to take this opportunity to congratulate her on her retirement. She has worked uh, with our Fredonia students for about 24 years and has had such a positive impact on all the students she has taught over the years. I would like to personally thank her for her leadership within the building over the years. And she will be truly missed and we wish her well. I know she has lots of adventures planned and uh, we really hope she has a great time with them. Our second retiree is Ann Schwartz. Ann has been at Fredonia for 31 years and she shared with me that she actually did her student teaching at Fredonia. So she, she has been here a long time and, and it's really wonderful. Uh, Anne's compassion for science was really contagious with our kids. Her students love to come into her classroom and do science activities. And so I just wanna congratulate Anne and wish her well in retirement. We're, we're going to miss both of them so very much. Mr. Uh, Drowinger. Yes, we have, we have two retirees as well at the elementary school. And uh, I'll start with Mark Fitzgerald. He's here today. Uh, congratulations, Mark, on your retirement. I hope to see you a lot around the neighborhood riding that bike and running around. Um, but I want to thank you for being a role model for me because I'll never forget sitting with Mr. Sorticio in my office. We were talking about something. Um, I can't remember what it was, but I started laughing and you could see Mark outside of our window uh, racing the first graders as they would get off the bus into the building. I don't think he won any of those races yet, but um, it was really cool to see you do that. And uh, that's what you brought to the school. It was your ability to connect with kids and it's inspirational. And, um, and if you don't know, Mr. Fitzgerald was famous for his mismatched shoes and socks. So I would like to officially announce that next year's Spirit Week Mismatch Day at the elementary school will be called the Mr. Fitz Mismatch Day. So that's in your honor. But Mark also taught some of his day at um, Wheelock. And I know Amy Piper's here, so Amy uh, would like to say a few things about Mark as well. I would love to, Mr. Fitz. It was great every morning starting the day with you. and. And it was amazing how quickly you learned every child's name. That still amazes me to this day. And you remember them and your legend, your, your legend and your legacy will live on for a long time. And, and Mark, what a great way to honor him. I just, I support that. Wonderful, wonderful. We'll miss you, Mr. Fitz. You're a legend. I don't know how we're going to replace you. Thanks for everything. Thanks, Amy. So we have one more retirement as well. We have Kath Lother. I'm not sure if she's here today, but Kath Lother uh, is, has a lot of experience in the elementary level, but she's retiring as a third grade teacher. Um, and what I, being a new principal, what was so nice about her was that she was on the interview committee. So that was nice to have her um, support. And, uh, but she took me under her wing very early uh, in my tenure at Fredonia. And um, she taught me that it was important to listen to folks and uh, be really reflective when I was, uh, learning and listening first. And she had the amazing ability of, of connecting with uh, her colleagues and really kind of being a, a mother figure for the folks in the building. Um, and I really admired that with her. So I know that she recently has a, a new grandbaby in her life and she's really excited to spending more time with that baby. Um, and Amy, you worked with her a lot too. Would you like to say a few things about her as well? I just would echo what you said, Mark. Uh, Kath taught me a lot about literacy and her time as an RTI teacher as well as a classroom teacher. 
Um, she's just, like you said, she's just got this ability to connect with people, remain calm, see the big picture and bring everybody together. So she absolutely will be missed as a mentor um, for her, her staff and, and again for administration as well. She's, she's a loss. She's a great teacher and we'll miss her a lot. So congratulations to Kath as well. And those are the two retirements that we have at the elementary school. I would echo the sentiments of the administrators, um, but I'd add, I'm so sad that we can't have the in-person celebration that you guys deserve uh, as the top 20 of your career. So please know that your colleagues love and respect you, your students love and respect you. Uh, we're going to miss your smiling faces in the hallway, um, but we will carry on this with you. We have to raise this is your health, happiness, and just abundance of joy as you invite your new retirement. Thank you. Thank you all. <clears throat> um, if I could just say thank you to all the retirees. Uh, I, I spoke to Mr. Fitz earlier this week, uh, but uh, you know it's not just your years of service. It's uh, you know it's you're putting the, your soul into this school district, uh, and that's what we're really going to miss. And all your your individual, uh, I will say, perkiness. Uh, your end of it, you know the the things that the students remember about you, uh, all of you. So th those are the things that. Uh, really make the school district and uh, we all appreciate you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, next we have uh, the minutes from uh, the last meetings. Uh, if I could have a motion uh, to approve the minutes from uh, the meeting of uh, June 9th and the special meetings from June 16th and 17th. I have Mrs. Fortna and Ms. Gaggenschatz. Thank you. Uh, any comments, questions, concerns, corrections on that? If not, everyone in favor of approving those minutes, please signify by raising your hand and keeping it there for a little bit. All in favor. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, next, we have uh, Mr. Forbes and the financial treasurer's report, the budget, uh, the budget status report for May. Mr. Forbes? Yes, uh, <clears throat> things are tracking as one would expect uh, in most of the areas. We had talked about during the budget process a number of areas where we were anticipating we'd be a little bit uh, different because of things that had occurred from March. And some of those areas we had talked about along the way included uh, utilities were down a little bit. Our maintenance and custodial costs were down partly because we didn't do the 1920 capital outlay that's been pushed out. There is an offset on the revenue side for that. We also had talked about transportation costs being uh, reduced and we still have no guidance from the state on whether or not we were to pay the contractor and if we did whether or not we get the aid. We have not done that. There will be on the revenue side from that as well because you won't get any back on that. And then we had talked about at last meeting the differences in how we were financing the current building project, taking another bond anticipation note, moving into next year instead of going to a serial bond. And so there will be a, a reduction there. But otherwise, most of the areas, the salaries, the benefits and so forth are tracking about as what you'd expect. Wonderful. Uh, any questions from the board? Okay. The uh, revenue status report for May? A couple of things to mention here. We did take in $12,000 worth of rental income, which was anticipated, and we did receive the full expected uh, May payment for state aid. There was some uncertainty as to whether the payments would continue, but we did receive what was projected for that. 
Otherwise, I have no other comment. Okay. So the uh, the funds from the state for May, you're you're expecting full payments through this budget process through the end of June, and then all bets are off. Is that what you're projecting? That's what we've gotten as of our word so far. I mean, it literally could change like everything has lately tomorrow. Right. But so far, the anticipation is there is no impact to the 1920 amounts. Okay. Okay. Any questions on the uh, revenue status then? Okay. And, and then I need a motion uh, to bring forward the uh, treasurer's report for May 2020. This is Fortna. And Ms. Gagenschatz. Okay, thank you. Any questions, comments on that? Mr. Forbes, any comments on that? No, once again, I mean, the, the, the bank reconciliations, the Treasury report is your bank reconciliation, so you're expecting that it all balances it does. We now have, as I mentioned in the past, Kim doing those, and I'm checking a duty uh, that the auditors have suggested. Everything's in order. I have no other issue. Right. Okay. So if there's nothing from any of the board members, uh, it, all those you know, in favor of, all those in favor of approving, uh, please signify by raising your hand. All in favor. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, we have discussions regarding the uh, 2021 tuition rates. Can I have a motion to bring that to the floor for discussion, please? Mr. Hawk, and a second, Mr. Johnston. Um, I'm, I'm going to ask Mr. Certicio and Mr. Forbes to uh, kind of explain this a little bit better than what I could. I know that uh, we have typically gone with the increase that we put out in our our taxes, but uh, Mr. Certicio? Well, let's talk about the rate first. Mr. Forbes, I know you, you had shared with the board about a week or so ago, uh, some information on, on what tuition rates you were recommending. Yes, uh, by board policy, and this came back in probably now, I'm guessing five, six years ago, the board at that time had asked that I provide to them in late May or early June a variety of different pieces of information, class size, the number of tuition students we have, for uh, what our rates were for the previous couple of years, the comparison is with the state allowable maximum rates and uh, uh, consumer price index as well. And then also to take a look at the change in our tax levy. As Mr. Sarticio mentioned, the practice of the board the last three or four years has been to increase the tuition rates based upon whatever the tax levy percentage increase was. So for example, in 1920, you went with a 0% and the board opted to do that for the tuition rates. This, year, this coming year, 2021, with the 1%, um, you know, I've got that laid out for you on the sheet and that will be the practice to follow if you're gonna continue that way. But it's really up to the board to decide where they would wanna be. So that, that's issue number one on, on what rates the board wants to, uh, to settle on. And I agree with what Mr. Ford said about the history in, uh, with this district is that uh, the tuition rates have mirrored the percent increase for um, district taxpayers. The second piece is a more general discussion uh, about accepting tuition paying students. And, and this is really broken into two, two discussions. One is maintaining those students who have been paying tuition all along. And that makes a lot of sense. So if we had a, a tuition paying third grader, we would want to continue them in fourth grade um, and for continuity for that child's instruction. The other, the other question though, that really needs to be discussed today is whether the district wants to accept new or additional tuition paying students this school year, okay? Um, so, for instance, uh, whatever grade level it is, they've attended, uh, the child's attended uh, their home district school, 
and for whatever reason, the parents now want to send them to Fredonia and pay tuition. Uh, in previous years, that was, an, that was a relatively easy discussion for the board, and, and, the, and typically the answer was yes. This year is different, and, and it's quite different from because of what we know and because of what we, what we don't know. Um, I can tell you that, that many districts in Area 2 are not accepting new tuition-paying students this year. Um, that's not only, not, not only because of their concern about class size, but also concerns about what school is going to look like in the fall and how we might um, be able to provide instruction for a growing student body. Um, I will tell you locally, and I know I shared this in, in a memo uh, with the board uh, at some point midday today, as uh, about 12 or 13 bullet items I shared with you. Um, so if you haven't seen it yet, you'll, you'll understand when you read it. Um, we have a situation in, a, in our kindergarten enrollment um, where we have, I believe, four or five uh, requests to pay tuition, but our class sizes in, in kindergarten right now are about at the max that we would like to see. And, and by my calculation early today, there was about 19 per class <clears throat> in, in kindergarten, which includes those four or five tuition paying students. Now, I believe, um, and I will need to do a, a, some further uh, legal research on, on this for you tomorrow, that it's, a, it's an all or nothing scenario for, for the board. It's, we, will, we, will, we will accept new tuition paying students or we won't. Um, it's not good form to, to hand pick what grade levels you'll, you'll accept. So for instance, we won't accept kindergartens, kindergartners, but we'll accept fourth graders. Um, I think you would really get yourself on a slippery slope. Um, you know, I do want to say this too publicly as well, so our kindergarten parents aren't, aren't concerned and our kindergarten teachers understand um, um, where we're at, um, that our pre-K enrollment as of today is down about 30 students from our current year. So we have some, and Ms. Piper has some flexibility within the staffing at, at the Early Childhood Center to make some adjustments. If that enrollment stays down, uh, and, and then um, we could shift a pre-K teacher to, to kindergarten, which is a secondary conversation. And I had no I've shared with the in the past, but to bring it back to that tuition discussion, I would recommend the board uh, focus on this in the order that we discussed it, talking about rates first and then talking about um, the addition of new tuition paying students second. <clears throat> Mr. Hawk. <clears throat> So in the past, uh, I'm not quite sure how they went about it. It was handled in the superintendent's office, but uh, we had availability to accept new students. I don't know if that was at a building level or if it was overall numbers. Um, and other years, we did not accept new students. Um, could you elaborate a little more on the policy or the uh, conditions which dictated that um, to, you know, to that point? Yeah, I, I can't quote policy as I sit here tonight, Mr. Hawk, but I can tell you that the, the, the scenarios that dictated that had everything to do with class size. And, and class size is, is referenced in board policy uh, and, and the board policy, again, I'm not quoting it, um, is such that um, tuition paying students will not, uh, not be accepted if it has a negative impact on class size. Okay. Right, and if I could come in further on that, Mr. Hawk, the practice the last, I'm gonna say at least five, six years before Mr. Sertizio came in was that the administrators and their offices maintain lists of those that were interested in coming in as tuition that would be discussed at administrative council with the superintendent before we came to the board with tuition rates. And we would look at the class sizes across the board to see if those students would be able to be fitting. Once they were, uh, going back to what Mr. Sertisio said, if we had one grade level that then was bumping close to what would be an uncomfortable number of students per, grade, uh, per class, then the tuition was shut off for the balance of the year. So the practice in, in short has been accept the ones on the list and then shut it off for the year. Okay. So to the points that I'm hearing from both uh, 
Mr. Forbes and Mr. Certicio, have we accepted any new students in the last three years? Yes. All right. And, and what procedures did you follow in that form? Just exactly. Exactly what I just outlined. Uh, the administrators got together with the superintendent, Mr. Defonso first and Mr. Ficio second, talked about the number of students at each grade level in each class section, whether or not there was available space um, to fit those students in, and then the decision was made to accept them. I could tell you that the numbers that you've taken in have been very small the last couple of years, you know, maybe one or two per grade level maximum, and your tuition population overall has been declining. So that, that's all factored into that. All right, and, and to the point Mr. Certicio was making as to the, uh, the new norm in regards to how kids are gonna be coming back, uh, I, I can see kids possibly needing the same uh, uh, maybe help or, or um, adjustment uh, period, whether they're tuition or they're students of Fredonia's district. So uh, will there be continuity if we do invite new students? You, you cut out on that last part. Will there be continuity in what? In, in the process with tuition students alongside of our district students. Yeah, so if, if the decision is to accept the tuition paying students, they become our students. And, and what I said earlier is in philosophically, my belief is once we accept a child as a Fredonia student, we should keep them as a Fredonia student as long as those parents are willing to pay that tuition. Um, you know, you bring somebody in the family for the long haul, not, not to, uh, um, show them the door, so to speak, when um, when it doesn't suit you any longer. So yes, there would be a continuity of instruction. The, the support um, would be the same as whether they lived next door to the school or they lived on the other side of town in a, someone else's boundaries. So then one last question. Uh, in your AC meetings, has there been any discussion as to it being a problem to invite new students into our district, as long as the numbers don't exceed? No, there's been, there's never been a discussion that it's a problem. Uh, my, my recommendation to this board, and I know it's not popular and it's difficult to make, is strictly based on, on, on class size and, and that impact. Right. I know Ms. Then, oh, sorry. <laughs> And the, the pre-K piece that you spoke of, mm -hmm. um, could you elaborate a little more on that as to uh, what happens closer to the beginning of the school year as far as enrollment increasing as a norm? Yeah, yeah really good question, Mr. Hawk, because um, that's something we've looked at closely the last couple of years. Uh, last year, you, you will recall that the creation of the Early Childhood Center received a lot of press, a lot of very positive press. And as a result, I believe directly as a result of, of that coverage, enrollment came in fast and furious at a very early time to the point where Ms. Piper and I were talking about um, whether we would be over-enrolled. And so we took a, a long-term look at enrollment in, in pre-K as best we could um, because the, the program is, is still relatively new being a full day program. Uh, and I had a, I had a hunch that the, the publicity led to people registering their, their students earlier. And that ultimately we would settle in, at, at about where we, um, where enrollment had, had been previously. And, I, and, I, and as luck would have it, I was correct on that hunch. My hunch this year is that I think people who have an option not to send their children to school, as all pre-K parents do, may be hesitant to do so. Now this is a very different world we are unable to present any information about what school is going to look like um, because we don't have guidance from the state. We, we are going to continue to, to work on that and, and, and build on what we know. Um, but a, a parent of a, of a student who's in pre-K may think twice about sending them for that, that important year. Um, and I, so I'm, I, for those reasons, I would not be surprised if the pre-K moment uh, is underwhelming this year. You know, right now, we're, I believe I, I said 66 students. We're typically about 89 or 90. 
uh, for <laughs> teachers that are in pre-K. Um, if we if the numbers stay where they are and we reduced or we shifted one of those teachers to kindergarten, both kindergarten and pre-K would have would have very appropriate class sizes. So one last thing, much to what I hear you saying is, is that <clears throat> there's a concern about in the environment we're in now, but we're not even at the point where school's open yet, correct? Correct. So there could be <clears throat> a rush if school opens in a week and a half. Sure. Okay. Sure. Yeah, I'm, I, again, it's a hunch, Mr. Hawk. I know Ms. Fortin, I have your hand up. Um, <clears throat> For a bit there. Well, that was all my questions. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Mr. <clears throat> Artisio, I was just wondering if you could provide, even if it's if it's round numbers, how many tuition students do we currently have? And I know you're saying that we have five requests for mm -hmm. kindergarten, but Mr. Forbes indicated that there have been lists in the past. So, you know, what's what's the real potential volume that we're we're looking at? Because I think that makes a difference too in understanding that if i'm not mistaken and the principals can correct me if i'm wrong you've got that four or five at the elementary level or the i'm sorry the upk kindergarten level i think the elementary if i remember correctly had one mark and i believe the middle school is also one or maybe none and then the high school i think was three or four but of course the high school is a lot different you've got multiple classes per grade level so the impact of class sizes typically is um, usually at the lower levels as opposed to the upper levels. And any <clears> lists <throat> for any of the other buildings, Mr. Forbes? I'm Do sorry, you? I walked over you. Sorry, no, sorry, I think that was me. Um, are there any lists for the other buildings other than the kindergarten of waiting, people waiting to, to come into the district? Yes, that was the numbers we just reviewed. Overall, the district has 10. Oh, oh. Per, sorry. For current year, district has 10 tuition students, grades K through 6 and 17 for grades 7 through 12. And you did lose a couple going out of high school this year or so. It's been a slow decline going back 15, 20 years. You're probably talking about a 45 to 50 tuition student base. And in the last couple of years, you've probably averaged 25 or 26. Perfect. Thank you. District -wide. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Johnson, you had your hand up. <clears throat> Uh, no, I think Mr. Hawk kind of you know, answered my question at the end there. I, I guess I was wondering, what is the last day that these pre-kindergarten students can sign up or parents sign up for their children? Um, and what if we did get a last second surge? Yeah, so there's, there's no end date for, uh, for registration for schools uh, as a public school system. Um, we have students register all, uh, all the time. Um, you know, if, if parents are um, going to sign up and, you know, they, they're waiting for schools to reopen, as Mr. Hawk um, um, mentioned a, a moment ago, that's probably going to happen in phase, well, schools will not reopen until phase four. Phase four is supposed to uh, be upon us in early July. So once early July comes around and we, we reopen school campuses with whatever rules and regulations are in place, that may trigger some folks to uh, register their children. Um, we have been handling registration through, uh, through mail. Um, I know that there were about four or five students that registered, or, or at least their, their registration materials were, were uh, processed in, in the spreadsheet that uh, Mrs. Piper and I both referred to, it was updated ju just this past week. Um, now, to answer your question further, should there be a surge in, in enrollment in, at any level, um, say late, sur late surge in, in fourth grade, where I know Mr. Grillinger is, is at, at or near uh, capacity for his classes, um, then the district would need to make some, dis make some staffing decisions. And whether it's, uh, you know, working with Ms. Screenhour and the FDA regarding some um, uh, reassignment or ultimately mm. um, you know, hiring a new teacher, which is, which is nothing that you want to do um, after the school year starts, after your budget is set, mm. is something this board has done in, in the past two years, um, first in pre-K and, and, and then again in kindergarten uh, around those class sizes. 
Right. The other piece I'd like to put in there too, uh, just so the board kind of follows through how the process is, we have typically provided the information, and this was part of the discussion when the board made the policy a number of years ago, uh, so that you would be addressing the, the rates now. And the reason that we wanted to do that was so that we would be able to get the letters and the contracts out to the tuition mm -hmm. companies. The policy calls for 25% payment before school starts, so it gave them an opportunity for two months to do that. You're under no obligation to do that the same now. Uh, as Mr. Sarticio said at the front end, you're really looking at two different pieces here. You could approve a rate today. You could delay looking at uh, whether you're mm -hmm. students or not for another week or two and see how things flow or you could decide along with the administrators just to simply not do that now. So really, I think you need to continue to have that two pieces. Do you want to establish a rate just in case? And then we have that and we're ready to go and see how it plays out or you address it both ways today. Yeah, Mr. Forbes, I think that makes a lot of sense. You know, um, I'm, I'm appreciative of the questions that the board uh, has for us tonight. I think they recognize uh, what a critical decision this is for um, possible future students. Um, so I agree with you that it does make sense to approve a rate and uh, postpone, unless, and I'm, I'm speaking, this is just a recommendation and postpone uh, a final decision on whether you're going to accept uh, um, all tuition paying students mm -hmm. until a later date. And, and, if, and if so, and if you like, I can provide some additional information and some hard numbers and, and in the form of a memo out to the board over the next couple of days. I'll we'll also um, can update, I see you Ms. Ford in one second. Um, I can also update, uh, get an update on uh, the legal advice that we got when we broached this topic uh, about two weeks ago. Go ahead, Ms. Portner. <laughs> uh, thank you. I, I, I agree. I think that that could be a prudent approach to, to see how things evolve the next couple of weeks. But my, my follow-up question on that is, is, if we say that we're going to accept tuition students, and as you mentioned, right, we can have enrollment as a public school at any time, do those tuition students, if we say we're accepting them, can we say we're only going to accept, you know, up to a certain date for the tuition yes. students and not accept mid-year? So then, okay. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and every year there is a, and I don't remember what the date is and, and Mr. Forbes really runs that side of it, but there is a cutoff for sure. Okay, super, thank you. Mr. Zambaron, did you have a question? Well, just the only thing is that uh, I hope that we can continue accepting tuition students for a couple of reasons. Number one, it is a revenue source. And I'm sure Mr. Forbes might have some idea of uh, how much <laughs> that is. The other thing is in our past practice, we have done basically what Mr. Certicio just said. I mean, just because somebody makes a request doesn't mean that they're automatically in. We would look at class sizes. We would look at teaching staff. Uh, if there's a space, if I remember, Mr. Forbes knows this too, that uh, we would only accept students if we had the space for them. And it doesn't have to be committing in July. We can make that commitment maybe September or whatever, until we know, especially this year being an atypical year. So based on the revenue source, uh, based on our past practice of only accepting people if there was a space available, a teaching staff available, a room available, desk available, whatever, uh, I think it would make good sense to continue accepting tuition students under our past practice guidelines. Thank you, I agree. Um, as, as a point of clarification now, uh, you're, you're talking about uh, pre-K, being down about 30 students. Is that correct? Yes. Down 30 from where we were a year ago. From where we are in the, yes, exactly. Okay, but is it a different practice today than it was, I'm gonna say four years ago, because four years ago, uh, four or five years ago, we could not tuition pre-K students because it was a grant base. That's still correct. That's still correct. We do no. not, yes. Still so correct. so if, if we had, uh, if, if we were down 60 kids in pre-K, uh, we could not tuition one student in that, from an outside district into our pre-K. We could into kindergarten, but not pre-K. 
Okay. So we're, we're kind of still talking about uh, relatively consistent trends, K-12 as far as class size. Um, my problem with cutting out tuition students is uh, I, I think that there's a continuation. Once you bring them in, you talked about uh, they're part of our family, but you also have families who maybe the, the oldest student is tuitioned, and then they have younger siblings. And, and to try to say uh, we're going to accept the older sibling but not the younger ones uh, because we're full, um, I, I think we're opening up a can of worms. But with, with that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just going to say um, let's, let's leave whether we tuition or not on the back burner until later this summer. Uh, but then um, since we have a, a motion to have this on the floor, um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm going to uh, go back to who made the motion in the second and ask if, <clears throat> if they would uh, agree to putting a percentage increase into those uh, tuition, rate, tuition rates. So the K-6, um, I'm going to ask whoever gave the motion in the second to have that increase by the 1% that our budget increased. And the same thing for 7 to 12, and increase those rates by 1%. And, and Ms. Slagle, if you could help me of who made those motions. Mr. Hawk and Mr. Johnston. Okay, would, would the two of you be okay with amending your, your motion and your second to increasing the tuition rates by 1% of what the, uh, the tax rate was increased? Mr. Hawk? Yes. Mr. Johnson? That's a okay. yes. Yeah. Okay, so we have, uh, we have a motion, we have a second, we've discussed. Uh, any other comments as far as increasing the tuition rates by just the 1% um, for the coming year? Any questions on that? Yeah, Ms. Paul Fortner. Sorry, Mr. Aldrich. Um, we spend all of our time really discussing whether or not we should tuition students and not really that much about okay. the implications of increasing and by how much. So I just want to put that out there um, that another component is of all the things that we don't know are going to happen and what we're going to need to do in the fall it, and, and accepting tuition students is I, I will ask the question, do we think that 1%, well, it's been the historic practice, is enough to account for um, the potential changes and things that we are going to have to do? And, and I, I don't know, and I know it's past practice, but we are really in unusual times right now. So. If I could just maybe try to address that, mm -hmm. um, there's going to likely be cost to the district to make the students and staff safe. We don't have the guidelines as Mr. Stratisio indicated uh, earlier, but you're really looking at, a, at a, all the students were to come back. You're looking at a student population of about 1500 students. And you're looking at if we were to accept all the tuition students at about 35 of the 1500. So individually, I'm not sure that the addition of another four or five or even inclusion mm -hmm. in the whole group of tuition students is gonna be your issue. It's going to be the greater issue of how do we do it to protect all the students. And I think there's going to be some challenges there. So what you're telling me is that there are fixed costs of running the school district that will not change whether we have 1,500 students or 1,535 and the variable costs of those additional 35 are relatively minor. Yeah, I mean, it's the same kind of conversation we had going back years ago now, where it was discussed, you know, what's the impact on teaching salaries, what's the impact on utilities, all of those things are 
not going to change if you don't accept four or five tuition students. If they were 10 or 12 coming in at one grade level, then there's definitely an impact. But other than kindergarten, where you're spreading one student per grade level, really there's not a significant change there at all, if anything. Go ahead, Ms. Palforna. I guess, you know, the only, the, I, I appreciate that and the fixed versus the variable cost, but just to kind of tag on to Mr. Jambrone's comment that it is a revenue source for us, not that we're looking to, to gouge anyone or, or that this is a, a real money-making opportunity, but again, 1%, you know, just putting it out there, you know, is, is that, is that enough considering that all of our variable costs for every student are going to go up and we don't know what that is. So should we make an attempt at re to recoup on the tuition students potentially more than we're going to get for our district students? I don't know. Mr. Johnston. Yeah, so piggybacking on Ms. Fortness um, question, um, where do we stand or do you know where we stand relative to other school districts in our tuition rates? Are we higher? Are we mid-level? Are we lower? <clears throat> I have a thought, do you have that info? Uh, I haven't done any review of that in, in a number of years throughout the county. I can tell you that in the past, very few districts even accepted tuition students. And some of those that did, did it based on contractual obligations with their teachers where they would allow teachers, ch children who didn't live in the district to come in for free. Some would use the state rate, which is much higher than the rate that Fredonia is typically charged. So it's kind of across the board, but I think if you take a look at it, at least if the numbers held consistent to what it used to be, Fredonia would be the largest tuition acceptor in the county or at least the top two. Yeah. I can tell you in my experience uh, prior to Fredonia, which was really entirely in area one, uh, the tuition rates uh, were double what uh, Fredonia charges. Mr. Hawk. Mr. Hawk. So, Mr. Forbes, do you know what the tuition rate is from Chautauqua Lake to Ripley? Because I think they're the largest uh, tuition uh, school. Right. You, I've forgotten that. You're probably correct, but I, I don't know, Mr. Statista, you do? I don't. So, well, that, I now that is a different situation, Mr. Hawk. In that, in that well, I, I know, I know, but it's still tuition. Okay, the number of students being tuitioned into Chautauqua Lake has caused Chautauqua Lake to hire more teachers. And, so, and, and much to the point that Ms. Fortner was asking, I, I think the tuition rate, uh, you would have to be in the double digits to really make any significant amount difference. Would the, even, uh, would even have to be in the triple, the triple percentage. Would the board uh, like uh, Mr. Forbes and I to gather some comparative data regarding tuition rates across uh, Chautauqua County? Do you need that information? If I could uh, just answer Mr. Hawk's question for a second, because this may be where you were headed with that. If you take a look at what, and I should say, New York State has a formula for each district. They give an estimated rate, then they give an actual rate. Typically, the actual rate ends up being less than the estimated rate in each year. But if you were to look at the 1920 estimated rates for kindergarten through sixth, as an example, New York State would allow you to charge $7,131. We're charging this year $2,716. Now, the difference there was discussed in the past as well, that if you were to say, you know, circumstances change this year, we're going to go from our current rate to our state allowable rate, that's a $5,000 per child swing, which probably would result in you having no tuition students or at least very few. So that was a discussion way back when, and that's kind of where the numbers that Mr. Hawk was kind of headed towards, I think. And Ms. Palforna? Well, and I think that's interesting and, and maybe some additional data would be helpful. I don't, I, I, I don't think I, I would ever suggest that we try and, you know, immediately close the gap, but I think it would be interesting to understand a little bit where we are positioned and again do we continue with a one percent or do we say okay over x period of time we would like to see this maybe more you know 
aligned with either other <clears throat> districts, you know, where New York State is, or, or again, how does that compare to our actual costs to have a student, um, an additional student in the district? Part of that, by the way, in the high school rate, when the policy was discussed again, going back however many years it was, six, seven, whatever it was, there was a change that an additional $500 was put onto the seven through 12 rate with the idea that those students have more clubs and activities and yeah. those kinds of things. And, and so that adjustment was made at that time. Right. Makes sense. So I believe we have a motion on the floor for a 1% increase. Um, you know, it, Mr. Aldrich, I think uh, either that motion gets rescinded or the board moves forward on, on voting on that. Uh, Mr. Hawk. Uh, I, I would be in favor of um, the, the wishes of the majority of my fellow board members to change and rescind that if necessary. Um, I, I think that probably the only way uh, that we're going to find out is to put this to a vote. That's that's okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> any other comments before we do? Okay. So all those in favor of uh, taking tuition rates and increasing them by the one percent as per the increase in uh, our, our tax rate uh, signified by raising your hand. I have okay. Mr. Jambrone, Ms. Gagenschatz, uh, Mr. Forster. Did I miss anyone there? I believe Mr. Hawk had his hand up. Hawk, okay. And Mr. Mr. Aldrich. Mr. Aldrich, what is your vote? Uh, I am in favor of it. Okay. So all opposed, raise your hand, please. Okay. This is Fortna and Mr. Johnston. Can I just, can I say one thing? Sure. Can I say something? Yes, yes. go ahead. Mr. Aldrich. Okay. Mr. Uh, Forbes, outlined it, presented the past history of this very well. We spent a lot of time on this a few years ago. I won't say a lot, Mr. Forbes, but a few years ago. And he, uh, he worked very hard on this. So he pre really presented the uh, history of this very well. And this is how the board came up with this at this time. So it wasn't something that was just put together very quickly. Uh, there was a lot of time and effort and a lot of meetings and research that went into it. And Mr. Forbes know because, knows because he was at the, the midst of it. <laughs> so, thank you. <laughs> Mr. Yep. Forbes, can I ask, uh, since we have mm -hmm. dollar amounts listed on the agenda, do you, would you have a dollar amount for the 1%? <clears throat> yes, the case it would be 2,740. Can you say that one more time for me? Two, seven, four, three. Okay. The seven twelve would be 3,094. Okay, thank you. Mr. Hawk. I, I definitely understand where, um, our two board members are coming from much to what uh, Mr. Jambrone said, but I do believe that uh, there is a policy and, and we're following policy as to our procedure uh, to this increase uh, because that was part of what uh, was done a few years ago. So, so what you're saying is uh, if, if we want to really alter uh, our motion and our, our attitude towards this, that we first change policy uh, before we change the vote. Right. Yeah. I, I guess my that? question to that would be if there's a policy in place that the tuition increase mirrors the tax increase, and I'm curious why it comes up for discussion in a vote. 
if a policy is in place that that's that's the designated procedure so i think that that's maybe something that we need to evaluate and look into um okay. if, if we're locked into that if that's what mr hawk you're saying that there's a policy exists that says that then okay. then that kind of changes the dynamic of the conversation okay um we'll we'll move on here um we next have the approval of a uh, a contract uh with buffalo hearing and speak if i could get a motion to Bring that to the floor, please. Ms. Gaggenschatz and Mr. Johnston. Thank you. Uh, any questions, Mr. Certicio? Uh, no questions, just a comment. This is uh, mm -hmm. for, for music therapy for a student who is in our pre-K pre program. Um, Pre-K services such as these are, are paid through the county. Uh, that student is transitioning to our kindergarten program, so those costs transition over to the district. Okay. Any questions by board members? <clears throat> if not, um, all those in favor signify by raising your hand, please. All in favor. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we have. Uh, we need a motion to uh, award a bid for trash removal for the 2021 school year. Can I have a motion to bring that to the floor, please? Mr. Mr. Hoff. Hoff. Mr. Jan Brown. Mr. Jan Brown. <laughs> you're, getting an, you're getting some exercise today. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Certicio. Uh, I don't have any comment on this. Mr. Forbes, do you? Uh, nothing other than to say that Best Way Container Service has been a regular uh, bid winner for us. They do a great job and we're happy to have them back again. Great. Do you know what the increase is, Mr. Forbes? Uh, it's a little over a thousand, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. It, it hasn't gone up much in the last few years. This, this time it was up a little bit, but still a lot less than it used to be. Um, yeah. Any questions from the board? Mr. Hawk? I can just say that I know that the transfer station has changed their uh, policies as to how the big trucks and, and uh, there's additional costs that these guys go through now to get rid of the uh, refuge. So I understand the change. Thank you. Uh, if there's no other questions, comments, uh, all those in favor signify by raising your hand. All in favor. Thank you. Uh, next, we have, uh, we, we need a motion to uh, bring the budget to vote to the floor from this past week. Can I have a motion on that, please? Ms. Gagenschatz? And Mr. Forster? Thank you. Um, any questions on that? Mr. Chambrone, were you, were you there when we verified the uh, voting results? <laughs> Never mind, sir. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Um, I I couldn't I just couldn't remember. Yeah. Thank you. And Rad, and, and I'd like to say one other thing. Remove my phone number from your speed dial. <laughs> Miss Lego, remember as the host, you can uh, mute Mr. Aldrich at any time. <laughs> uh, uh, all those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. All in favor. Thank you. Um, next, we have uh, a resolution to appoint an interim term superintendent, uh, Ms. Ms. Colleen Taggarty. Uh, can I have a motion to bring that to the floor, please? 
Ms. Powell for in a, in a second. <clears throat> Mr. Johnston. Thank you. Uh, any questions on this? Okay. Um, all those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. All in favor. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, next, we have uh, the approval of an appointment of Reynold Tonelli, Jr. Uh, to the assistant, um, assistant principal position. Um, can I have a motion to bring that to the floor, please? Mr. Forster and Ms. Gagan-Schatz. Wonderful. <clears throat> Mr. Certicio. Thank you, Mr. Aldrich. I'm, I'm very pleased to present Ron Tonelli Jr. to the board for your consideration. Um, Ron uh, interviewed uh, with our district actually a year ago um, and, and for an assistant principal position. And I really appreciate his tenaciousness in, in coming back um, for the high school position. Um, and what I was impressed with most is the growth that I, that I um, really witnessed from one interview to the next. He, he interviewed in an outstanding manner both times, but you could tell that he really uh, worked hard in the past year to improve his skills even more. Um, he is a uh, Fredonia resident. Um, if you were on uh, the Zoom meeting early, you heard many, many teachers say hello to him and, and his children. So it's fantastic to be able to uh, recommend um, one of Fredonia's own, own community members as Mr. Trashke's new right-hand man. Uh, the biggest downfall is that people will not be able to tell them apart in the hallway um, because he's, and, he, and you're losing one bald man, but you're getting another one. So that's good as well. <laughs> but really, Ron, uh, this will probably be my last chance to address you in this fashion. You did a fantastic job throughout the interview process. Really appreciated uh, the way you presented yourself and, and your thoughts. Um, I know that you are going to make an outstanding administrator. And I know that Mr. Paschke is, is in a great position now to help you learn and grow as a, as a leader. <laughs> And I know that he's looking forward to putting you to work next Wednesday. So get ready to roll, assuming you get, you know, get four out of seven yes votes and hopefully seven out of seven out of seven. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, it's it's extra special to be considered a you know a resource for the community that you live in. So um, I tried to keep all my kids around, but uh, they went swimming instead. So. <laughs> <laughs> I got one back, so she really wanted to listen to the board meeting. I, I made her go out and swim after a while. So. But uh, I want to thank you all for the opportunity. It's uh, it's it's extra special. Yeah, you you should have an easier time in the high school. Uh, there's there's a graduating senior that uh, will make your life a lot easier because she's graduating. But uh, <laughs> anyway, I mean. I need a, uh, a vote by board members. Uh, all those in favor of the motion and second, please signify by raising your hand. All in favor. Hey, congratulations, Mr. Tonelli. Thank you very much. Thank you. You, you can go swimming now, Ron. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Just don't answer your phone if Mr. Aldridge calls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, next we have uh, uh, the, the approval of an appointment of Tim Kacklemeyer to a full-time seven and a half hour per day, 10 month posi probationary position. Can I have a motion to bring that to the floor, please? Mr. Jambron. Mr. Jambron. And Mr. Hawk. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Certicio. Yeah, is, is Mr. So, Kickelmeyer on? I don't think that he is. So, okay. Um, just to explain, because we've appointed Mr. Kackelmeyer a few different times now. Um, as you're aware, the creation of the mm -hmm. civil safety advisor is a civil service position. Uh, a competitive position. So Tim had to uh, take a civil service exam and be reachable, meaning being the top three scores. 
in order for um, him to be able to maintain his position. He actually came in number one, um, and, he, and um, so obviously he is reachable. Uh, civil service regulations require a probationary period of anywhere between eight weeks and one year. Uh, the recommendation is that we uh, use the, the lesser of those two and assign him to a probationary period of eight weeks. You may have a question of why that probationary period is over the summer months when, when Tim is a 10 month employee. Uh, that's, that's the requirement of civil service. The permanent appointment has to be within, I believe, 30 days uh, of when we receive the exam results. Tim's done a great job for our district. It was really um, the, the right move by this Board of Education to, to insist on a new model. Uh, I'm gonna thank you for probably a third or fourth time publicly and, and pushing me to do that work. Um, you know, I'm, I'm proud of uh, I'm, I'm proud of that process. I'm proud of the hiring process, which came at a time of some personal turmoil. I know Ms. Fortin was part of that the hiring team uh, uh, that hired Tim as well. And I really think uh, that that committee did a great job at selecting the right candidate. Uh, and I know Tim's really excited to continue on with that work. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, I, I agree, Mr. Certicio. Uh, you know, when we started this process, uh, we weren't sure what we were going to get. And uh, as, as uh, we have oftentimes talked in our family, uh, sometimes you don't get what you want. Sometimes you get a lot better. So, uh, yes, we, we, did, we did hit a grand slam with this one. Um, any other comments from the board, questions from the board? All those in favor signify by raising your hand, please. <clears throat> All in favor. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, next, we have uh, several um, recommendations for tenure. Um, these are all um, these are all under the same motion, and Ms. I'm going to ask just, that we take them all. Go ahead, Ms. Slagle. I was just going to probably say what you were going to say. I'm sorry to cut you off. I was just going to say we are, um, our principals, our administrators are ready to make comments about each one of these folks, and then we could vote on them after that if you'd like to proceed that way. Yeah. Um, if, if I could, let's, let's move these all together. And if we have any questions, uh, we can, we can later amend a, a motion or change that. But if I could get a, a motion and a second to bring these to the floor, please. Ms. Gagenschatz and Mrs. Fortna. Wonderful. Um, Well, let's take these in order. Um, uh, Mr. Certicio, uh, Mary Beach. I'm, I'm actually going to defer my comments uh, to all of them until the end, um, okay. until the end of this section. So, uh, as Ms. Lego pointed out, we've asked the the building principals to prepare a few words. Um, you know, I do know that the board has received. Uh, letters of recommendation and, and tenure attainment, attainment documents that you've had a chance to review. Um, but I believe Mary Beach would be Mr. Drollinger. Thank you. Perhaps Mr. 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 Uh, thank you. Um, Mary, congratulations. And although Mary does work in my building, uh, Kristen Farrell wanted to speak uh, about the special ed tenure appointments today. So congratulations, Mary. But um, Kristen has prepared a more formal. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Congratulations, Mary. Um, it is a sincere pleasure to speak on your behalf. Mary Beach is an excellent educator. She is insightful and knowledgeable of her student, and I feel that she approaches her work each day not as a task, but as her vocation. Most outstandingly, I feel that Mrs. Beach is caring and compassionate. She's conscientious, builds positive relationships, and she communicates openly, honest, and often with students, parents, colleagues, and administration. Um, she is and has been a teacher in the self-contained setting, and she's well-suited to this instructional setting. She works with some of our youngest and most unique students. Mary's brought integrity and strength to the elementary special education team, and I am personally honored to endorse her appointment for tenure. Okay. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> um, anything else on Mary? Okay. Um, Ashley Emsmeyer. Oh, yes. Ashley Emsmeyer is a PE teacher in the elementary building, and congratulations mm -hmm. to Ashley. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to tell the board that I consider tenure um, one of the most important jobs of a principal, and um, we take this under very con serious consideration. And Ashley, when you came up for tenure, um, I was excited because I'm excited to work alongside of you for a long time. You, uh, There's one thing that I remember particularly about this year was some of the kids came running to me, and you created a new game. Um, Maybe you can help me out. It was named after a video game, I believe, that some of the kids were playing. And I had a parent come into my office and say, what are they doing? They're just playing video games in PE class. And I said, no, this is Miss Emser. She created a brand new game um, that's relevant to what the kids are doing at home. And, and they were really having a good time with it. So anytime a student is um, talking about school at home, I consider that a win. And I look forward to working alongside you for a very long time. Congratulations, Ashley. If there's no other uh, questions, comments, uh, Elizabeth Gruber. Yes, uh, Liz Gruber is in a unique situation. She is our library media specialist for the entire district. Um, I can speak <laughs> on her behalf for a little bit and uh, turn it over to some of the other principals. Um, but Liz, congratulations on tenure. It's, it's a big deal. And I know you've worked hard and this was very uh, meaningful to you. Um, I wanted to tell the board how um, impressed I was with your work with your book bingo and how you advocate um, to bring new things to our district. You always are um, working to put yourself in a position to learn more and grow as a professional. And then you bring uh, what you've learned back to our staff and you help them grow as well. And I think that that's a quality that I love to see in teachers is the ability to grow and learn and then help others do the same thing. So you inspire me um, and congratulations on your tenure appointment. Great. And, and Kimberly Aguilar? And Kim Aguilar, she's in the elementary building as well. Um, and I'll defer over to Kristen Farrell, but congratulations, Kim. Sure. Thanks, Mark. Congratulations, Kim. I'm thrilled to address your recommendation for tenure. Kim's been in a co-teaching role at Fredonia Elementary, and each year she's demonstrated a remarkable ability to build a positive team dynamic with her general education counterparts and to provide students with high quality sound instruction in the least restrictive environment. Kim hones her craft through participation in professional development. She's always eager to use her skills to benefit her students and takes a problem solving approach at all times. She's always impressed me as someone who has a solution to any challenge that presents itself. Kim is clear and compassionate in her communication at all times and she's flexible and thorough and it's an honor to work with her and present her for tenure. And I am um, happy to know that she'll be here for a long time. Yeah. Um, un unfortunately, I don't have access to everybody's uh, uh, video feed here. So I, I pan through and I see that that she has her fan club with her. So I think that that's, that's wonderful. Uh, it's always good to see uh, 10 year applicants with their with their fan club as uh, our, our assistant principal with his fan club. That's great. Um, where are we here now? Uh, Beth Ronsky. Hi, it's uh, my honor to talk a little bit about Liz. Uh, I'm going to share this with, with Kristen Barrow, who's also uh, in, involved with the tenuring process. Uh, Liz, you, you were amazing. Uh, when, when we came to you last year, you were uh, fully entrenched in the middle school and loved your job in the middle school, and we asked you to come to the high school. And uh, in a matter of moments, you completely changed gears and were excited to be in the high school and you just brought a new energy to our school. We were so excited to have you in our building and, and that just spread like wildfire through our school. So I, I really appreciate that. I appreciate all that you do extra for our kids too. It's not just 
just what you do in the classroom. It's beyond the classroom. It's all the extracurricular things that you're doing, the Interact Club, the Girls Power Club. The kids are excited to be in your class. It's just an honor to be able to give you tenure, tenure today. Yeah. Uh, next, we have uh, Kristen Trieri. Darren. Kristen Farrell, did you want to say something too? Um, I was going to speak just for a moment on uh, Liz Ronsky as well. Thanks, Darren. Um, yep. I like what you said, and a lot of the comments I was going to make are exactly the same. I think Liz has emerged in my mind as someone who I'd categorize a little bit as a trailblazer. She's always willing to do something new, she's flexible. She's great with technology and she supports other people in those um, efforts. And I think what it stands out the most to me about Liz is just her re relationship building with her students and staff and her desire to always be involved and create new opportunities for kids. So I echo your sentiments there and congratulations, Liz. Thank you. Again, Kristen Trieri. Hi, Kristen. It's really exciting to be able to get you tenure tonight, too. Uh, you've been, if I can be a little punny, you've been instrumental in the growth of our music program. Uh, as you guys know, the, the orchestra has just grown incredibly, and uh, it, it's, it's really due to your care and concern for the kids. Uh, you have super high expectations, but at the same time, you, you, you bring that, that level of trust and care to your kids. So they want to reach all of those expectations that you set for them. Uh, you, you model resilience, you model grit, and you just model excellence in being a human being. So I, I thank you for all the work that you're doing with our music department, with our kids at all levels. You're, you're tremendous and a great addition to our staff. So congratulations. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you. Yep. Uh, and last, but definitely not least, uh, Melissa Putney. Definitely not least. Um, I am so thrilled to be able to speak on behalf of Melissa mm -hmm. Putney. Um, Melissa, I, I just don't even know where to begin. You have brought such joy to our Wheelock staff. Um, having you join our family because it is a Wheelock family has just been wonderful. The pride that you have in your kids, the relationships that you build with our youngest students and their parents, the time that you take to go above and beyond. I sort of giggle to myself every morning when Melissa walks into school because she's usually carrying about four bags, two boxes, making several trips, but she genuinely stops and greets every single person she runs into, asks how they are and, and genuinely wants to know. And it's just, She's just a joy to have around. I also giggle at the end of every day. It's sort of like a dorm room in the pre-K hallway because all the teachers are in the doorways of their rooms just chatting about their days and the support that Melissa gives to her colleagues and to her students is just tremendous. And I'm so glad you're part of our family and I am thrilled that you'll be with us for a long time. Congratulations, well-deserved. Thank you. I will... Uh... I will just add, oh, Mr. Sertizio, go ahead. Thank you. So um, I just want to take a moment to recognize each of our, our tenure candidates. And as I said, as, as I said when uh, we met with the board uh, about our tenure candidates, it, it, this is a really special group for me. Um, Melissa, you are the first teacher I recommended to be hired in this district. And I'm so happy to be here when, when, you're, when you're getting tenure. Congratulations. And I, I absolutely concur with everything Ms. Piper said. From the moment I met you, I knew that you were a very positive, happy addition to our team. So thank, thank, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Liz, what can I say? You've been, you've been in so many different positions in the district, and you keep excelling. I so appreciate your, your commitment to really some of our neediest and toughest kids. Uh, I will always remember walking into your classroom, and you'll know what I'm talking about, where one of our, um, one of our youths who, who can be pretty challenging, um, but who I, knew, who I knew personally, and he was so disarmed in, in your classroom, and that's such a fantastic thing. That tells me that one of the kids who really struggled to trust others had a deep trust for you. So good for you, and, and thank you for that. Uh, Kim, I want you to know that I recognize the personal kindness that you shared uh, towards me. 
you consistently respond to any of those group emails I send out, whether it's some hokey Mother's Day uh, uh, message or whatever it is, and you share back your, your own words of kindness to me. And I want you to know that I, that I recognize that and I appreciate that. And I also distinctly remember uh, observing you teach along with uh, Amy Sells a couple of years back and what a great job you, you did in that classroom. So thank you. Liz, I wish I had half your energy. I don't know how you do it. Um, I, you know, even when, when school was closed, there were, uh, it did, a day didn't go by where there wasn't some great message from, from, from you for our students and some new, new way to encourage reading. So thank you so much. You, uh, you really have a big job being the, the, the LMC for our district and I really appreciate that. Uh, Ashley, Ashley and Mary, I'm gonna put the two of you together, um, but for very different reasons. You, uh, you both demonstrated a lot of personal trust in me and, and I want you to know how much that, that absolutely meant to me for, and for your own reasons. Um, and so thank you for that. I'm really grateful that I was able to be by your side and supported you when, when you needed it. And, and Mary, I swear, that young lady is getting lunch from me before she graduates. Doesn't matter where I am or what else happens. I made a promise it's gonna happen, okay? Um, I know we've got uh, Elizabeth Robinson with us and Darren Paschke with us as well, who are also two recent candidates, but I'm, I'm leaving one person for last and no, I didn't, I didn't miss Kristen. Um, this is so amazing to me. Um, I, was, I was with Kristen when she went from eighth grade to ninth grade. I was at both of her high school proms. I was at her graduation. I probably wrote her a letter of recommendation for college, which she still got in despite my poor, my poor writing. <laughs> so to be here and, and be recommending her for tenure is an absolutely surreal moment um, for, to, to be part of this for a young lady I met when she was probably 11 or 12. So really neat for me, Kristen, that, that I'm able to be uh, a part of this for you. Uh, hope you see some value in it, not some creepy guy that keeps falling into different places. Um, but really, um, very proud of all of you. And, and I'm not sure if Michelle wants to say anything, but one, one last thing I want to say about tenure is we created a tenure celebration process last year uh, in partnership with the FTA. And that's going to happen, um, but it's going to happen uh, when we can all be back together again. So I'm sure that Michelle and Christine will, will organize uh, an event, uh, hopefully in the fall, uh, when we're all under good health and, and the pandemic is, is, is better. And you know, there'll be cake and certificates and, and celebration once again. But to all of you, congratulations for, uh, for reaching this milestone. Very proud of all of you. Yes, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm reminded with, with everyone's comments tonight, the principals, uh, of, of why Fredonia is such a great school. And it's because the, the teachers who are getting tenure tonight uh, are, are not just showing up at work, but they're putting their soul into this school and, and making sure that our students come first and, and really putting uh, not only just the effort, but uh, again, their soul into this, uh, into this district. And I appreciate every one of you. Um, if there's no other comments by board members. Um, this is Greenow, did you want to speak? Ooh, I didn't prepare anything, oh. but I mean, we okay. are definitely excited to celebrate when we get back together. And I do have a, a nice it tenured teacher pin for each and every one, every one of you. Yeah, so we will be sending home certificates for each of you, so congratulations. Great. So uh, on, the, on the motion to approve tenure, uh, all board members who are in favor, please signify by raising your hand. All in favor. All in favor. Congratulations. Uh, next in new business. Um, it is, uh, this is not the easiest one, uh, but we have uh, a letter of resignation uh, from Christine uh, Gegenschatz, and I will need a motion to accept that resignation. 
Yeah, everybody's <laughs> sitting on their hands like me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. <laughs> this is Fortna. Thank you, Ms. Paul Fortna. And Mr. Forrester. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Forrester. Um, Chris, I know that you're looking to move out of the area and uh, uh, Fredoni will be for the lesser. And I, I truly appreciate your work uh, in helping me um, and, and keeping me on track. I don't think that you've had to correct me uh, in any any item tonight, and and that I'm hey. off track or I missed something, <laughs> but I know time. that you. I so think time, this right? is the first yeah. meeting, but we're, yeah, we're not done yet either. So, uh, <laughs> really, I, I appreciate your your knowledge, your wisdom, uh, your insightfulness. Um, I will miss you. Thanks. I'll miss everyone too. This has been an amazing, amazing experience. So. Yeah. But, yeah. Any comments from the board? If, if not, all those in favor signify by raising your hand. All in favor. I'll abstain from that. <laughs> this is getting shot to abstaining. Yes, for obvious reasons. Awkward Thank vote. you very much. Uh, next, we have, uh, we need a motion to bring to the floor the approval of a donation. And, you know, I, I'm sorry, I should have, uh, Mr. Certicio, I should have made you bring this so we could see what it looks like. Do you have well, a picture of it? Mr. Aldrich. Imagine a 1994 French. Holton 179 double French horn. Yes. What in the so, world? So imagine a French horn. No, I now, can't imagine. Now imagine. Show me a that. picture. Show me a picture. Hold <laughs> on, I gotta Google it. <laughs> uh, well, while he's Googling it, uh, I need a motion to accept this donation. Ms. Fortna and Mr. Hawk. And and before we vote, I got to see a picture, Mr. Statistico. <laughs> Unfortunately, Google's only coming up with uh, what I know to be a regular French. Uh, I don't know if we can approve this without a picture. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. It's got two sets of tubings, one in F and one in a short B flat. Well... I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> that means uh, let's bring it to the floor for a vote and move on. Okay. Well, we, we've got it to the floor. Um, any questions, comments? I think that this is a uh, tremendous, uh, tremendous uh, gift, and I, I appreciate his, his, uh, Mr. Diedrich's gift. Um, any other comments? All those in favor signify by raising your hand. All in favor. Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Diedrich. Um, next on the agenda, we have um, just a discussion on the board meeting schedule. Uh, and, and that should have been in your backup. Um, if, if I could just, uh, if we could um, summarize this very quickly by saying the second and fourth Tuesday of, of each month, uh, just one month, one meeting in, in July and August, one in December and uh, we kind of get around budget season in April. But uh, um, I, I, I have found that uh, keeping this on the schedule of the second and fourth Tuesday works the best. Uh, 
we will also, uh, we will, we are not approving this at the time, um, but we will be looking at this during the reorganization um, in two weeks. So does anybody have any questions, comments uh, of what they'd like the schedule to be looking like? Any concerns with this? Are you settling on July 7th for the reorg meeting, Mr. Aldridge? Um, that is that is what I'm proposing. Yes. So that will be in two weeks. And that will not be a Zoom meeting. That will be a meeting uh, at the library. As of today, that's correct. Yes, as of today. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. Yes. Uh, yeah. Any comments by any board members other than that? Okay. So we will meet in two weeks at the library. Um, announced board correspondence. We have our high school commencement this Sunday at 1.30, June 28th. Uh, it's a Chautauqua County Fairgrounds. Uh, for more information, uh, please visit our, visit our website. Uh, or uh, we, can, we can just give out Mr. Passy's phone number, one or the, one or the other. What? I feel like everyone has it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I bet it does. I bet it does. Um, um, this is, uh, yeah, I, I guess we've got two difficult times in one meeting. Um, we've accepted Ms. Ms. Hagenschatz's uh, resignation for later in July, uh, but this is also our, our final meeting with Mr. Certicio. Uh, so, so this is a, um, this is a, 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 I'm going to say a difficult goodbye. Uh, you know, we brought you into the district three years ago, um, you know, hoping that you would outlast each of, each of the board members terms. Uh, but, uh, you know, I know that I have learned an awful lot under your tenure. Um, I think that we've all grown and I appreciate the work that you've done for the district. Uh, I know it's, uh, uh, it's been a lot of work, but I appreciate your work. So uh, thank you, Mr. Certicio. Um, with that, um, I'm gonna ask if there is uh, anything else that you would like to add, Mr. Certicio. Thank you for that, um, for those comments, Mr. Aldrich. I, I do want to extend uh, appreciation to the board and to the community for giving me the opportunity in this position. Um, you know, I'm certainly looking forward to the next adventure, but, but it is bittersweet leaving. I mean, we had, you just look at tonight's meeting and the camaraderie amongst the administrators and the teachers and, and particularly those folks being recognized. Um, so it, it is not easy to step away. Um, I certainly have grown immensely uh, as, a, as a leader, as a superintendent, and, and as a person. And I owe um, really everyone in this meeting and, and many more a thank you for, uh, for that growth. Um, I know that uh, the district is in great hands with, uh, with uh, Kelly Integrity and with this board. I know this board is, is well versed in how to fill a, a, uh, uh, the big shoes of, of, uh, of an empty seat. Uh, and I look forward to seeing who uh, steps forward from the community to do the important work that, that you all do. Um, I said my, uh, I, I, as the board's aware, I'm having ex exit meetings with each of the administrators. So I've said my, my uh, you know, final mm -hmm. bits of wisdom, I guess, with, with them. And I will continue to do so for the next week or so. Um, um, like Mr. Paschke, I'm pretty confident everyone here has my number and knows how to get it. 
and I hope you use it if you ever need to. Um, I might be uh, moving on to uh, a different experience and different opportunity, but I'm certainly going to leave uh, a little bit of myself behind. So, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, did you guys notice that Mr. Forbes didn't clap? I noticed he didn't clap. John, <laughs> we're meeting tomorrow for your evaluation, pal. <laughs> I'm a walking ray of sunshine, remember that. <laughs> um, with that, I will go through the administrators. Mr. Paskey, do you have anything to add? We have um, a lot coming up. <coughs> Can you hear me? Yep. OK. This Friday, we have our, our student <coughs> lap out, and that is going to be uh, at uh, students should be arriving at 9:45. If any of you are coming, you should be there by 9:30 to pick up your materials. We now have over 100 uh, staff members that are going to be socially distanced on the sidewalk. Um, I have to thank Cindy Weistup. She made Fredonia masks for every single one of those people uh, to wear. One, she's got half of them are orange and half of them are black. Very cool. Uh, so we're, we're going to be celebrating with the seniors on Friday with that. There is a graduation rehearsal to follow that at the, at the fairgrounds at 11 a.m. Saturday, uh, based on the weather, it's not looking great for class night, but we're hoping. Uh, we have that event in the elementary and middle school parking lot. And then, of course, graduation coming up on Sunday. And there's tons of information out there. It's also on our website. Uh, we mailed things home, so there should be a lot of uh, questions. That should be answered in those in those uh, letters that were sent out. Uh, I do need to thank Ron. Uh, Ron, welcome aboard. Uh, Ron is my slightly older twin brother. Um, <laughs> but uh, oh, <laughs> hey, I just had to throw it in. I had to throw it in. Ron's got thick skin. No, but I, I'm looking forward to working with Ron. He he just really shined in the interviews. Um, we, I already stopped by his house, brought him some Fredonia gear. And uh, we're, we're ready to get rolling. He, he's a fantastic man. He's going to be great for our district. He's going to be very visible. Uh, he cares about students, uh, keeping them first. And, and he cares about the Fredonia culture. And, and one thing that I really loved about his interview, um, he talked about you know, how great he felt Fredonia was, but that he wants to be a part of making it even better. So not someone that, that wants to rest on his laurels or just say, hey, Fredonia is a great place to work. I'd love to just sit there and be a part of that. He just wants to make it better. So that's great. So thank you, Ron. Looking forward to that. Um, Chris uh, Gagenschatz, I, I don't want to take forever, but um, I just appreciate you. Thank you so much uh, for all that you've done as a board member. And, uh, and Mr. Sotisio, thank you for your, for your leadership and the guidance that you've given me and helped me to grow. And, and uh, you know, don't, don't hesitate to sprinkle a little more water in my direction because I could always use a little more growing. So uh, looking forward to, to you know, what, what you're going to be doing at your next job and, and hope to maintain a relationship so that uh, we, we can continue uh, growing together. So thank you. Great. Thank you, Mr. Paskey. Uh, Ms. Trollman? I just want to thank Chris and Jeff for their leadership. You know, I really appreciated it over the last two years, and you both are definitely going to be missed. Um, and I think that's all I have. All right. Thank you. Mr. Drellinger. I just wanted to thank the board for their continued support of clubs like the Learn and Serve Club. It was really great today seeing those pictures, wasn't it, of those kids. Everybody, all of you were smiling. It was great. So thank you for your support with that, and thank you to the dedicated teachers for doing that. And Mr. Sertissi, <clears throat> for uh, being a mentor and giving me an opportunity of a lifetime. Best of luck at Eden. They're lucky to have you. Great. Thank you, Mr. Drawlinger. Ms. Paper. Oh, this is hard for me. Uh, Chris and I started together as uh, she was on the PTA, and we were both driven because I think we were told that we would have a challenge in front of us building a playground for our four-year-olds as they joined us when <laughs> we locked up to the main campus. And Chris and I took that challenge on and were able to raise money in one year with the help of Ms. Biglisi. Um, that still stands. So we have that playground for the four and five year olds. And when Chris told me she was running for the board, I was thrilled because I knew what an advocate she was for kids. And she's proven, proven this 
you know, to this day and will continue to do so. So, you know, I will miss you, my friend. I will miss you. Um, I'm trying to cry. Uh, and Jeff, um, again, you know, you've done a lot for me. We've become friends and um, a mentor to me. And I feel like, you know, you've taken Fredonia that much further. I really appreciate that all that you've done for all of us and all that you've taught me over the years. Thank you. And you'll be missed. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Piper. Mr. Forbes, you mean? Yes, a couple things. Uh, like all the offices, the business office is now back in to the Main Street campus. And I would like to thank my staff for their efforts while we were out. We successfully navigated through seven pay periods, including the large end of the year for the teachers with very few gaps, which I'm very pleased about that. And we paid all the bills and the lights are still on. So uh, my staff did a really great job uh, working through the use of technology um, to get things done. So I appreciate that. Uh, congratulations um, uh, to Ms. Gagenschatz on moving on to new opportunity. Appreciate her efforts on behalf of the staff and students while she's been on the board. And of course, Mr. Certisio other than sneaking up on me once in a while when I wasn't expecting it. I uh, really enjoyed uh, working with him. And however it happened, he reduced my stress for a couple of years. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Forbes. Um, but I, I think you've got somebody raiding the refrigerator behind you. <laughs> well, I'm check and see if his car is here, so you're probably right. Yeah. <laughs> it's been five minutes since he ate last, so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you, you bring up a very good point, though, Mr. Forbes, in that, um, you know, there's, there's an office that has kept running, and you may not be present in the building, but you, you are present, you've kept the lights on, uh, you've kept the paychecks rolling, and uh, you know, that is very much appreciated. Thank you. And we passed the budget, so there's that. <laughs> Mr. Rada. Um, well, first, uh, congratulations to Chris. Uh, good luck to you. Uh, congratulations to Jeff. Again, it's been wonderful working with you for the last three years. Um, just wanted the board to know that I'm currently the representative for, from Fredonia, who is currently serving on the Erie Tubosi's Return to Work Committee. Uh, it is a very, very big committee made up of representatives from all 27 component districts, superintendents, directors of, of uh, instruction, directors of HR, transportation heads, cafeteria heads, teachers, maintenance workers, you name it, they have representatives from, from everybody. And we are having those discussions about what is it going to take to bring children back to school coming in, in, in September. This work we're doing in parallel to our local district committee, who's looking again at very similar, uh, similar topics. We hope to merge those two together in the next couple of weeks. The committee I'm on at BOCES will have a final product July 14th. And we really hope to look, take that template and be able to move forward with it. So we are planning right now for the bidding of school year. Good, it's good to know that we've got uh, local input. Thank you. Ms. Fierro. Thanks. Um, it's hard being last. All the good stuff already gets said before I get a chance. But I just wanted to um, thank Jeff and Chris for caring as deeply as you do about all the things that you do. And I sincerely wish you the best in your future endeavors. Yeah, thank you. Ms. Slagle. Thank you. Um, Chris, thank you so much for everything you've done to make me feel welcome from day one. Um, I'm so happy for you to move on to, to new things and I hope things, I hope everything is, is wonderful for you and I hope we can stay in touch. I really appreciate your, your um, leadership and you know, the knowledge you have for this board and this community and it's, it's been uh, great learning from you. <clears throat> Mr. Sorticio, um, you know, you, you are a natural leader and from day one, you've made me feel welcome. Um, we, we slid right into our jobs together like we'd known each other for years and, and that meant so much to, um, you know, someone coming in new, not only new to Fredonia, but new to my job. Um, I'm incredibly proud of 
how ambitious you are and and you know i i know that eden is going to be the better for having you um i've learned so much more from you than how to do my job and i'm going to miss you so much thank you thank you miss Flegel. mr zambrone no thank you nothing no all right mr hawk Chris, I want to say uh, good luck in your next <laughs> chapter of your life, and, and uh, we're going to miss you. Uh, I remember the energy you brought. Uh, I was just a new board member then uh, with the playground uh, initiative you were bringing on. I'm like, this is a big task. <laughs> and <laughs> you did wonderful, and you pulled it off, and, and you've been there for Fredonia uh, right up to this last minute. So... Thank you for all your efforts and your dedication. Thanks, Tom. And yeah, I really appreciate all the time that you've uh, worked with with our district. Thanks. So thank you. And uh, Jeff, uh, good luck in your next chapter. Um, I, I think we've both learned uh, different things and values uh, and, uh, and ways to communicate. So um, good luck. Thank you. Um, Mr. Hawk, Mr. Hawk, yeah. the, uh, the loading dock is going to be unveiled tomorrow if you want to swing by. Yeah. Can we have a little ribbon cutting? <laughs> so, did you hear what I said, Mr. Hawk? No, I didn't. The, the, uh, they're, uh, they're pulling the stuff off the loading dock, so it should be cured and we can take a good hard look at it tomorrow. I'm there, I'm there every morning. <laughs> Mr. Forrester. Yeah, I got a few few things here. Um, one, thank you to the voters for approving the budget. Greatly appreciate that. Congratulations to Mr. Aldrich and Mr. Johnston on remaining on the board. And uh, you know, I, I appreciate your commitment to the board. Thank you so much for that. Uh, congratulations to all the new the teachers that got their tenure tonight. That's a, that's a huge step in the, in the, and it's a, it's a privilege to have them on board uh, for the district. So thank you for that, or congratulations to them. Um, congratulations to Ron. Uh, Ron lives down the street from me, so I'll have to, uh, you know, talk a little bit of Fredonia with you sometimes when I see you. Uh, so congratulations to you. Uh, thank you, Chris, very much for all of the, the time that we've spent together, um, for all the support that you've given the board over the years. Uh, you, you are a, uh, a class act, uh, just a great person. Thanks so much. You will definitely be missed. Dave, Dave will be missed as well, um, because I won't see him that much anymore. Um, once in a while, I'll see him uh, you know, over on the campus, uh, but I don't know if I'll see him as much anymore or not, but um, I wish you the best. Uh, in your in your move and Jeff I wish you the best as well in your move I hope that it, uh, you get uh, as much enjoyment out of your next stop as you did uh, here at Fredonia and I wish you and your family the best in the future that's about it thank you thank you well said Mr. Forrester Ms. Paul Fortner a couple of things I think a lot of uh, great positive things in today's meeting um, echoing Keith, uh, really excited to see all of the tenured um, faculty that we'll be able to keep in the district who've been doing a great job. Really excited about Mr. Um, Tonelli coming on board. Um, Brian and um, Steve being able to continue. We have great people in our district and I think that, that that really is a testament. So all the positive things there. I also want to have a special shout out. Thank you to Mr. Paschke for all his work with graduation. It has been a lot of changing, moving parts, and um, he's he's really done everything to make a, the best experience for our seniors. And I'm really looking forward to Sunday. So thank you for that. On the other side, um, Chris, I'm really going to miss you. We have, you know, a lot of PTA time together, and then it's mm -hmm. been, been a great experience um, learning from you on the board, um, watching you on the board. So I, I appreciate that. I wish you all the best. Um, and same for Mr. Sertisio. Um, thank you for your patience with my long bulleted emails. And um, 
listening patiently um, and helping me understand my role as a board member, um, but always helping me feel heard. And, and um, I, I appreciated that very much. So um, I wish you all the best. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Powell Foreigner. Mr. Johnston. Well, everything's been said. <laughs> uh, no, I would like to thank Chris and Jeff and wish them the best of luck in their future endeavors. Uh, our time together was short. I thought it'd be a lot longer than this. <laughs> I enjoyed working with both of you though. You're, you're both class acts. And I'd just like to say, I'm, even though I really enjoy doing these Zoom meetings, I'm looking forward to doing less of them next month <laughs> <laughs> and, and getting back to the similar policy. But no, again, thank you, uh, Chris and Jeff. Yeah, thank you, Mr. <clears throat> Last and not least, Ms. Gagenschatz. Um, yeah, I mean, thank you all for the kind words. That's super nice. Um, I would like to congratulate all the tenured um, teachers today. It's so exciting for them. They've worked so hard for it. It's such a great, great achievement for them and super proud and excited for the district that they have these new teachers, you know, new tenured teachers. Um, congrats to Ron Tonelli. I think it'll be great in the high school. Love that you guys got the ball thing going on. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> and um, thank you all for your support. This has been a great, an, an honor and a great job. I mean, I really um, have loved every minute of it. And uh, I will miss you all. Um, I do have one more meeting. You don't have to say on nice things again the next time. I am excited. <laughs> that the next meeting will be in person so we can see each other one last time. That would be really great. And Jeff, congratulations. Um, you've been a great superintendent, a great leader for our district, gotten lots of good balls rolling and getting us uh, headed in the right direction. So congratulations on your new next great thing. Thank you, Chris. Thank you all. Uh, and and uh, thank you for catching some of the thank yous that I've missed. And uh, <coughs> that's why we have the entire entire board sounding in. I appreciate that. Um, we anticipate the need to enter into executive session to discuss matters pertaining to uh, particular personnel. So uh, we are going to move into executive session. When we're done with that, uh, we will move back into regular session and adjourn. There will be no uh, decisions made. There will be no votes uh, taken in executive session. It will just be to, uh, to discuss. Uh, so with that, I would uh, appreciate a motion to move into executive session. Ms. Gagenschatz and Ms. Powell Fortna, thank you very much. Uh, all those in favor, signify by raising your hand. Wonderful. We are now in executive session. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate all your uh, efforts tonight. Good night, everybody. Oh. Give me just a moment to remove everyone and stop the live stream and then I will remove myself. I'm having difficulty removing Liz. Liz, can you hear me? There we go. <laughs> Was that you or did she hear you? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay.